Hello, and welcome back. We're going to take a detailed look today. A simple but detailed look at how to keep what you want. How do we keep what we want? That's the question. So let's back up as we answer it here, and we're going through the text of A Course in Miracles, chapter 7, section 8, the unbelievable belief is what the section is called. So as we proceed through this material, we see the idea that thoughts remain in the mind of the thinker. In other words, ideas leave not their source. <laughs> I'm laughing because we've seen this before, and here it comes again, and tomorrow it's likely to come up again and again and again. So let's take a more in-depth look at what is meant by that. So the ego, first and foremost, seeks to preserve conflict. It does not want conflict set aside. It does not want it to go away. It wants to pit somebody against someone or something else. It wants to preserve conflict. So what it does is it gives us a, a little carrot, a little sugar pill, just a little treat to pacify us for a little while. And it seems to make the conflict go away for a little bit. It lessens it, it softens it, but it doesn't make it go away. Because when we realize that there is no conflict at all, there's no ego at all, there's no separation at all, that that's the end of the ego. We simply set it aside. It never was in the first place. But here, running amok, we simply don't realize that. That's all. It's a simple mistake that we can set aside. It's just that simple. We can choose to set the ego aside, but it will preserve conflict. Let's understand that it's going to preserve a dichotomy. It's going to preserve any form of separation as long as it can. And it's going to seem like problems here in the world are solved. Let's take a relationship, for example. You may have a fight in your relationship with your partner, and there may be some really, really chronic ongoing issues, but identifying with the ego, you identify as an individual self-sustaining survival unit. Your partner appears to be an individual separate, individual self-sustaining survival unit. You all get in a fight, and then you hash it out the next day and everything appears to be fine the conflict flares back up again later this is the ego at work smoothing things over in the short term to put you to sleep basically to distract you and to give you little treats so that you don't pay attention to what really matters keep your eyes on everything that appears to be outside of you and don't do the inner work. That's what the ego wants you to do, is to turn this off. And some of you may, you may be about to do that. That is the ego talking to you, most definitely, whether you do or don't, it's up to you. Doesn't matter. But just know what is keeping you delayed. And know that it is a simple mistake that you could choose to sit aside in the present moment, right now. The ego always wants to project. It wants to project all of these feelings of guilt and fear that you feel. It wants you to put them out. It's projection. It places 
all of this apparently outside of you. And if you feel afraid, then when you project that fear, it's your brother's fault that you're afraid. It's someone else's fault. It's your boss's fault at work that you're uncomfortable today. It's the government's fault. It's the fault of the hot weather this time of year, or the cold weather if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. It's June 21st, by the way, in North America. So it's the fault of something or someone that appears to be an external something or someone. That's the ego projecting. And it always does. It always seeks to project. So it believes and when you identify with it, you also believe that you're getting rid of this fear. You're getting rid of all of this baggage by projecting it, by putting it off on someone else, by throwing it as far away from you as you possibly can, which is usually onto the next person, the one right in front of you. Project, project, project. And the ego thinks it's getting rid of conflict. Couple of major errors. Number one, Conflict can't be shared. Why can it not be shared? Well, it's utterly meaningless. It's nothing, because there is no separate other. There's no conflict, in other words. Why? Because there's only perfect oneness. There's no separate other with whom we could possibly be in conflict. So the ego does not recognize that. And of course, doesn't want you to recognize it, which is why we say it over and over and over and over again. Yeah. The second major error the ego makes here in thinking it's getting rid of conflict is that you can't get rid of something by giving it away. It's how you keep it. Very important, isn't it? You can't get rid of something by giving it away. That's how you keep it. Thoughts remain in the mind of the thinker. When you project, your projection remains in your mind. It's not outside of you at all. It remains in your mind, which is why people find themselves so defensive. We project and we think that our projection is coming right back at us. Somebody upon whom we've dumped all of our loaded baggage of frustration and guilt and fear is going to come back and deliver the same to us. And so we engage ourselves in a constant, frantic, frenetic stream of activity, mental activity, preparing for the worst. And we entertain all kinds of revenge centered scenarios in our mind, and we think about everything but the present moment. We think about all of the crap that we've put off on somebody, and we think about all of the past harms that they may have done to us, or we spend time thinking about the future and plotting what we're going to do if so-and-so says this. What if this happens? Then what do I do? Future, not here. Past, again, not here not here. And in the present moment, we are anywhere but right here, right now. There's no place else. There's no other time. There's no space and time at all. There's only perfect oneness. And when we see ourselves as separate and we attempt to project, we don't see it. Thoughts remain in the mind of the thinker. Ideas leave not their source. Your projection remains in your mind. So what happens when you extend love to the Son of God? Yes, how about this? What happens when you forgive and allow your inner teacher, the Holy Spirit, to work through you and share your inner teacher? What happens then? Those loving thoughts remain in the mind of the thinker. Ideas leave not their source. We give away love, our oneness, in order to keep it in our mind. This is how you keep it, by 
giving it away by extending it. To whom do you extend it? Yourself. There is no separate other. Another way of looking at this is there's no one out there. There's no out there. So you can see just from this example that the ego's thought system and the Holy Spirit's thought system are completely different. They're not opposed because the Holy Spirit does not oppose. Remember, there's no opponent. They're very different. In fact, they're completely different. And this is the single choice that we make in the present moment. Love or fear, God or the ego, life or death, really. Truth or illusion, however you wish to characterize that. So yeah, characterize that however you see fit. It's the one choice that we make, and we're invited to choose the thought system of the Holy Spirit. So how do you keep what you want? Give it away. So let's ask the question here. What do you want? Do you want the peace of God? Do you want the peace of God and nothing else. We're invited to want that and only that. It's a workbook lesson. It's a prevalent idea in A Course in Miracles. We're invited to want the peace of God and only that. And the Course says this in many places in many different ways. We're invited to be vigilant for God and his kingdom with the emphasis on only for God and his kingdom. And that means being vigilant against these mental lapses and ego clinging and paying attention to our own mind. When Jesus tells us in the Course that we're much too tolerant of mind wandering. That's the truth, isn't it? We're much too habituated to our shiny little toys and distraction. There's really no arguing that when you really think about it, is there? So the ego is simply a mistake. We're invited here to not be afraid of the ego. Don't be afraid of the ego. You can choose to set it aside right now. And this is how we dispel it, by refusing to identify with it and setting it aside. Give it over to the Holy Spirit. Give it over to your inner teacher. We're invited to give our entire experience over to our inner teacher. We simply withdraw our belief in the ego. Give it over to the Holy Spirit. Withdraw your belief from it. Set it aside. It's a simple mistake. It's not a monster. We don't dispel it by treating it like a real live monster. We don't kick it in the face. We don't kick fear in the face, despite what the t-shirts and bumper stickers say. Let's talk about that for a moment. There is a message in that that is indeed quite helpful in the world, which is don't give in to fear. However, this is a course in miracles. So if you wish to be free of fear and the ego and guilt and suffering once and for all, you would not make an enemy where there is none. You have no opponent. We simply set this idea of the ego aside. You don't have to bludgeon it. You don't kick it in the face. You don't punch it in the face. You don't pull out your pistol and shoot it. Just set it aside and give it over to the Holy Spirit, which acts just like a light switch. If this is a helpful visual, when you turn on a light in a dark room, where is the darkness? 
what happens to it? It's gone. It's as though it were never there. It was not. Another useful visual here is waking up from a dream. When you dream, everything, all of the images in the dream appear to be very real. They do. We hear sounds in the dream. We, we may taste things or feel things or get into an argument in the dream, or we may make hot, passionate love to somebody in a dream. We may be eating ice cream on the beach one day, and then all of a sudden we're someplace else, and everything seems real. Sometimes we're happy. Other times we're scared out of our minds. And something is always happening, and it's always really random, such that when we wake up in the morning, we think, well, that was weird. So this is awakening. It is very much like awakening from a dream. When you wake up from a dream, it's gone. And you realize that it was never there to begin with. It's not here. It's not here. It's not here. It's not here. This is a dream from which we're waking up. Now, A Course in Miracles, for those of you who may just be joining us here for the first time or the second time, if this is new to you, this is not the only spiritual tradition in the world that posits that the world that we appear to inhabit is simply an illusion. It's a dream. This is far from the only tradition that says that. So this is exactly what the ego does not want you to think. So a useful practice, besides getting in touch with your inner teacher and forgiving the Son of God under the guidance of your inner teacher, which is the practical centerpiece of the practice, the learning of A Course in Miracles, is practical application. Let this help your practical application as well. When you remember to think about it, just look around you today. Take a split second and tell yourself, this is a dream. This is a dream. Quite simple to say, isn't it? And do this in addition to the work you're doing with your inner teacher. There is no substitute for forgiveness. There is no substitute if you're truly going through this course for reading it. If you're going through the workbook, there's absolutely no substitute for doing the practice periods as closely to the letter of the instruction as you possibly can. Just throw this on. In addition, it's not burdensome. This is a dream. It's four syllables. Whenever you remember it, remind yourself of that. Because it is. Now, it may seem right now that it's very concrete and it's very real. And the debt is piling up. The bills need to be paid. The dog has to go outside. And your knee hurts. Right? It, it, for example, right? it can all seem so, so real. It's not. This course is a switch in thought systems. We're switching from the thought system of the ego, separation, blame, fear, suffering, to the thought system of the Holy Spirit. Our inner teacher shows us the way things are, and teaches us how to see things as they are. Along the way, we'll encounter these ideas that are complete anathema to the ego. The ego doesn't want you to believe that this is a dream. The ego doesn't want you to believe that it doesn't exist, that it's a simple mistake to be set aside. And then it's gone 
The ego doesn't want you to believe that it was never there. The ego does not want you to believe that there is no separation of any kind. The ego wants you to run far, far away from the expression that ideas leave not their source. So the question becomes for us here, moment to moment on the path, what do we really deeply, truly want? And we're invited to want the peace of God. How do you keep what you want in your mind? You extend it, give it away. Enter the practice of true forgiveness. Enter the practice of extending love to your brother who is you. Remember, there is no one out there. There's no separation of any kind. And yes, this means you and God are not separate. One equals one. That is the verbal math that we're invited to do in this course. One. That's literal. And this is what we're waking up to. That you can call it a journey if you want to. You can call it a path, a voyage, a marathon sprint. You can call it whatever you want. It's the process of setting aside the ego. It's disidentifying with the ego. You can call it coming home if you want to call it that. It's not really a journey at all because ideas leave not their source, capital S. And you are the thought of God. Time to. We all are. Ideas leave not their source. So we're all invited just to let that sink in today. If you've heard the idea a thousand times, great. Today may be the day where that really inspires you to practice. The longer we're on any spiritual path, and I'm sure that whatever your spiritual experience and, and path has looked like in this lifetime, you've had moments of just getting something, haven't you? Where it just was like an aha moment or something just seemed to hit home and it dawned on you that, oh yeah, that's your inner teacher speaking to you. And it might be the 1000th time that you hear ideas leave not their source, that it really hits home and you really get it. And that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? It's gorgeous. It's very cool. And perhaps that is happening for you right now. So wherever you are in this journey that seems like a process, whatever your level of experience with this course, this video series is for everybody. So if you're new or you're just checking this out, welcome. You're more than welcome to subscribe if you haven't already. And the subscription button is the red arrow here in the corner of your screen. Go ahead and click on that. We'd love to have you join us. We'll do several videos a week. This is what we offer here on this channel is several discussions a week. Right now we're going through the text of A Course in Miracles and all of your questions and comments are more than welcome. So please do feel welcome to leave them here and I will see you all again very soon.